Hello, my name is Joel. Welcome back to Learn with SOS. This video is another episode on process analysis. In our previous video, we looked at some process analysis parameters. We looked at the cycle time, the capacity, the capacity utilization, rush, order flow time, etc. This video is a continuation of that. So before we get started, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more wonderful content like this. And also, please be actively involved in what we are about to do today. Don't just sit there and listen. Get your calculator and your notepads ready for you to um, grasp the content very well. So, in this video, we are going to learn how to diagram or draw or configure a process layout. In simple terms, when given the activities of a process, how to diagram them. And we won't end there. After diagramming the activities, you will look at the bottleneck activity and what we can do to minimize the bottleneck activity or to reduce the cycle time of the bottleneck activity so you look at the alternative ways of doing that or the other possibilities yeah because you, you realize that in most operations it follows um, a fixed sequence of activities that sometimes creates inconveniences for the customer or and, and the service worker for example, if you look at the cafeteria and, and most um, manufacturing assembly lines, the product follows a fixed pattern. You see, if you look at the cafeteria, you realize that the diners have to follow or push their trays along as they are being served. So sometimes if the workers don't use on average an equal time, that is where the bottleneck will set in. There will be a delay and that will create a lot of problems. The customers will be aggravated and it will lead to it will have a rippling effect on the organization. So basically we are going to look at when giving a process layout, what can we do to um, satisfy customers and and we do that by reducing the, the cycle time of the bottleneck activity. So without much ado, please let's crack on. So we are going to use an example of an automobile driver's license office. You see, before you are issued a driver's license, you go through a lot of activities. Right now, from our previous video, we know that a process is a series of activities. So if you look at our table, before you are issued a driver's license, you go through six activities. So the table has each activity with its description and allocated cycle time in seconds, don't forget. So the first activity, we have a um, review application for correctness. So that means if you tender in your application, they will review it for accuracy and that will take 15 seconds, followed by process and record payment and that will take 30 seconds and finally they will issue a temporary lenses and that will take what 30 seconds so these are the six activities that anyone will go through now we are going to learn how to um, convert these activities into a process layout basically we are going to diagram it in, in, in a picture form so the activities follows a sequence as you can see from activity one that means after reviewing the application for correctness we move to activity two that is you process and record payment we move to activity three so we are also going to draw each activity we are going to link them in order we are going to use arrows to do that so on the right side of the table we see a rectangle there 
that is how you are going to draw the activity so you draw a rectangle as we have seen here and the rectangle has three sections so we have the activity number the cycle time in seconds and the capacity per hour so that is how we are going to draw it so you just need your rectangle like this you just first draw your rectangle like that then you divide the rectangle into two diagonally from right to left as i have here from right to left like that then the lower portion of the rectangle to you divide it into two from the edge like this you see it's very simple good so this place is where you write the activity number so for instance is if sorry if we are diagramming the first activity so you write here one mm -hmm. then just below the one i mean this portion we have the cycle time in seconds so you can see the cycle time here is 15 so that means i'm going to write the 15 over here then this place this portion is where we write the capacity per hour with the capacity we calculate and we learned that in our previous video that capacity is one over cycle time so with the first activity the capacity you need to take a calculator and calculate it will be one over 15 times 3600 because the cycle time was given in seconds were it to be given in minutes you would have multiplied by what 60 very good so it will be 1 over 15 times 3600 so whatever you get you write it here so you do the same thing for all the activities so at the end you will see six different boxes following in that line so let's clean and go to the next slide to see how the activities are being arranged so I'm, I'm trying to clean my my beautifully drawn box okay so it's very simple how to diagram activity good good so we are going to you can even pause the video to draw all the activities make sure you link them with arrows and you calculate the cycle time for each of them you can pause to do that so now let's move to the next slide so you can see this this is the process layout of the activity so you can see we have six different activities here from the review to the issue so you see the activity names have been written here as indicated in the previous slide and the cycle time is below and they have calculated the capacity per hour for each activity so someone may ask how did we get a 240 because if you go back we saw only one in 15 now the 240 is the capacity it was given by one over 15 times 3600 that is the formula and that will give you the 240 and the second activity too was given by one i know this reminds me please the one the two and the three the four the five here are just the activity numbering we, we don't use them in the calculation the formula is always one over the cycle time so don't go and say the capacity for payment to be two over 30 no it's still one the one two three is just a number it's just for um identification sake to show they follow a sequence right mm -hmm. so this activity to be one over 60 times 3600 this one will be one over 40 times 3600 one over 20 times 3600 
1 over 30. Mm-hmm. So if you do that, you get a capacity for each activity. Now, what does the capacity mean? So that means if you take the first activity, activity 1, it has a cycle time of 15 seconds. And the capacity is what? 240. So that means 240 applications is done per hour. Then that means activity 2, how many applications are done? 120. Activity 3, 60. Activity 4, 90. Activity 5, how many applications? 180. Activity 6, how many applications? 120. And each has its own cycle time. Good. So that is the meaning. So that is how. So if your diagram looked like this, that means you are on the right path. So you see, we linked arrows to show that they are in a fixed sequence. So now, from here, we are going to answer some questions about the flow diagram after drawing it. You can take your time and draw it nicely and calculate your capacity very well. Don't forget, capacity is for one over cycle time times 3600 if the time is given in seconds if it's given in minutes you multiply by 60 good i hope you are following me okay so we are going to look at another example but before that let's come back to this um, example can you identify the bottleneck activity in this process which of the activities do you think is the bottleneck activities I know you are asking yourself, what is the bottleneck activity? The bottleneck activity is the activity with the highest cycle time. The activity that takes a lot of time. So now check all the cycle times, 15, 30, 60, 40, 20, 30. Which of them has the highest cycle time? yes you are right it is 60. so that means activity 3 takes a long time to complete so activity 3 will be the cycle time so the moment you're able to draw or diagram uh, activities in the process you need to be able to identify the bottleneck that's the first thing you need to know because if you want to improve the process, or if you want to improve a process, you start with a bottleneck. That's where the problem lies. So, failure to identify the bottleneck means you can't um, improve a process. So, this example, we just want to have a look at how we draw uh, activities in a process and how we identify the bottleneck. So, our next example, we are going to look at another activity another uh, or some activities within a process and you're going to answer some questions below it so uh, we move to example two with example two this is our activity it is a, a process in an airport that is work allocation at an airport mm-hmm. so that means before you pass through that airport you go through these six activities the plane immigration baggage claim customs check baggage for domestic flight those of us who have traveled by flight before I think this thing to be familiar and each activity has its cycle time allocated 20 16 40 24 18 15 don't forget the cycle time is given in seconds so the moment you are calculating your capacity you should always be one over the cycle time times 3600 seconds so now i will advise you to pause and draw this table down because i'm going to you to answer some questions so you can draw the table and write the activities and their cycle times okay so these are the questions you're going to answer 
for the activity that was shown this activities okay so we are going to look at um, the bottleneck activity and the maximum number of passengers who can be processed per hour we are going to look at what would you recommend to improve the balance of this process and the last one we are going to calculate some parameters you calculate for the system capacity, the total direct labor content, the rush order flow time, and direct labor utilization, given that there are six workers. So now they've given a preamble here that the table on the next slide that is I've already shown lists airport activities and their average times. Yes, except for baggage claim, these activities must be performed in the sequence noted. So that means baggage claim can be moved from or can be moved to um, to, to um, from any position. The rest must follow in the same sequence. Except for baggage claim, these activities must be performed in the sequence noted. Now, so before we can answer these questions, the first thing to do is to diagram. Or draw a process flow chart for this diagram so please pause the video and draw the process flow diagram for each activity activity one up to six if you don't draw it it will be very difficult for you to answer the question so you need to first draw so you take activity one you draw your rectangle you divide you write it activity name you write the cycle time below then you calculate for the capacity okay so if you draw it like this then you are correct so the first step is to draw the flow diagram and identify the bottleneck so we have the plane immigration baggage claim so that is how it looks like anything apart from this is wrong so if if you get the capacities wrong i think that would be with your calculation so 180 225 90 150 200 and 240. someone may ask how did we get that 180 in activity one okay so the 180 is 1 over 20 times 3600 seconds then the 225 here was 1 over 16 times what 3600 and i take it again don't go and calculate the capacity here by saying 2 over 16 like i said the 1 the 2 the 3 are just numbering the activities but the formula is 1 the 1 is constant so the 90 here we got it by 1 over 40 times 3600 and it follows in that line so the 240 here is 1 over 15 times 3600 so if you take your time you get it correct so now the first question i, I want to ask is um looking at these activities what is the bottleneck activity don't look at the answer and tell me what is the bottleneck activity so now the bottleneck activity is the activity which the slowest flow rate or the highest cycle time so let's check all the cycle times 15 18 24 40 16 20 which of them takes the highest time yes you are right it is activity 3 baggage claim takes how many seconds 40 seconds to for 90 applications however the others use less time and they able to do more applications if you look at um, baggage check baggage just 18 seconds but how many applications 200 applications so baggage claim is our bottleneck so you can see the answer bottleneck activity is baggage claim with the longest cycle time of 40 seconds so i believe at this juncture you should be able to draw the process flow diagram for any activity or for any process and after that you should be able to identify the bottleneck 
and they should be able to give reasons why or reason a reason why an activity you've chosen is the bottleneck because of the highest the highest or the longer cycle time good now the next question asks that what is the maximum number of passengers that can be processed now if you remember in our first video we said that the capacity for any system or for any activity is the bottleneck capacity if you've forgotten then i advise you to go back and watch that video so because baggage claim is the bottleneck activity that is the 90 the capacity of the baggage claim is the capacity of the whole system so that means 90 passengers can be processed per hour i take it again if you take any system or any process the capacity of that system or the process is equal to the bottleneck capacity so because baggage claim is the bottleneck activity the capacity of baggage claim is the capacity for the entire sorry for the entire process so that means the maximum number of passengers that can be processed per hour is 90 that is the capacity of the bottleneck then the next question was asking what can we do to improve the balance of this process so now let's go back to the uh, process diagram now there are so many ways to improve the process there is no one i mean one right way no if if you really understand the concept you will be able to come out with your own way of improving the process so now let's look at the activities very well and their cycle time so if you look at activity one how many applications within an hour 180 activity two how many applications 225 that is the same as the capacity because the capacity is what the activity can do good activity three how many applications 90 activity four how many applications 150 activity five 200 activity six 240 per. so that means every hour these are number of application each activity can what can i mean bring out now let's assume each activity is manned by one employee so that means there are six employees in all and this employee is very slow because within an hour he or she is able to perform how many applications 90 which is very slow so if you if you look at the activity in front of this that person is able to do two to five but you're able to do nine so that means there'll be a lot of excess there will be idle inventory here excess immigration will, will, will be here good because this one is very slow because 90 and 225 the difference is very huge mm, but if you look at 150 and 200 you see it's, it's very close 200 and 240 is very close but here here 225 and 90 is, is, is huge good so there will be always um idle um activity here because this activity is the slowest so now you are a manager or a manager of this airport and you are asked to what can you do to make sure that this worker perform well now there are so many possibilities one you can either hire another staff to come and help the baggage claim employee or you can merge 
some of the activities together. Or you can re-engineer the whole process. So you see, there are so many things you can do. It might be that the machine, the, the third worker is using is out of date. He, he or she needs a better machine, right? So let's look at our suggestion. However, like I said, there are so many ways. We, we just want to improve the bottleneck. The moment you improve the bottleneck, doesn't matter by how much. The moment there's an improvement, it is correct. So this is our recommendation for improving the previous activity. Now, you can see that in the previous activity, there were six employees. Good, 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 good. Now, we have made some of the activities together. So we have made activity two and four together, as you can see here. So that means it will be combined. It wouldn't be a separate activity. So the two, those employees who are managing the immigration and customs are now going to do the two at the same times concurrently or parallel so they're in parallel now and the moment you combine there's a moment you combine two activities their cycle time will change now let's go back to the previous video sorry the previous um, activity you see you have combined this activity and this activity now here was 16 the cycle time was 16 and activity 4 cycle time was 24 so if you combine the two the cycle time will be 40. So that's why you see the 40 here. And we have brought activity 3 forward. So we have employed another um, personnel to come and help um, the baggage claim. So you can see if you count the boxes, there are how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that means an extra employee is added. So that means two people be working on the baggage claim. You see, in the previous, it was only one person. So right now, we are employing two people to work on the baggage claim. And now, if you look at the previous, um, you see, the person was able to perform 90 applications within an hour. And right now, they are two. 1990 that means they can perform more 180 applications within an hour so we have brought the baggage claim right after the deep plane because the plane can perform 180 applications within an hour and these two one can perform 90 one can perform 90 so that means it's, it's in sync so 180 90 will go here, 90 will go here. So we see we have we are trying to improve the process so that the customers won't be waiting in line. Then we have made the immigration and custom. So we have trained the two employees, they can do both. So they will be doing it at the same time. And let's find the capacity. How did we get the 90 here? So the 90 is 1 over 40 times what? 3,600. Don't forget. So here will be 90, here will be 90. So you can see that there, will be, there wouldn't be any bottleneck here. So 180, 90 will be 90 will go here. So this 90 will move here, this 90 will move here. So you see I would better the process. Then it, it, it moves to the check baggage, that is 200. You see 90, 90, 180 to 200. The difference is just small than 240. So you see, this is a better, this process is better than the previous one. So like I said, there are so many ways. Someone can say, okay, for me, I will make the first five activities. I will train the first five employees for them to do all the first five activities. Which is also a, a way of re-engineering. Yeah, so there are so many ways for you to do it. The moment be able to improve the process then you are good to go so someone may ask how how would you know whether to bring this one forward or bring this one backwards 
it starts with a bottleneck activity. The moment you are able to identify the bottleneck activity, just ask yourself if, if, if you are a manager, you have six employees, one of them is very, very slow. What can you do? You can decide to employ one person to help the person, or you can blend some of the activities so that it will go faster. So that is what we have done here. We blended two and four so that it will be in sync. If we should, because the reason why we have to blend two and four is that we have employed another person to help the baggage claim. So if we don't blend some other activities to, there will be another bottleneck somewhere. Hmm. So we have to look at the capacity. We check in the capacity as well. Hmm. If here is 90, 90, 90 now, and if you blend two activities that can take the 90, why don't you blend? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, there is no one way of um, improving the balance of a process. The moment you're able to identify the bottleneck and you're able to improve the bottleneck, then the process is balanced. So this is our recommendation. So now, the following questions is asking us to calculate some parameters that we, we've already looked at these parameters in our previous video. We have to calculate the system capacity. Don't forget, the system capacity is the same as well, the capacity of the bottleneck. And if you go back, what's the cycle time of the bottleneck? That was 40. So to be 1 over 40 times 3600 or 60 by 60. We are converting the seconds. You see, the time was given in hour. It's per hour, but here the cycle time was in seconds. So you have to change the hour to seconds. So it is 1 over 40 times 3600. So we are going to get what? So it's 90 passengers per hour. That is the capacity of the system. Then you look at the rush order flow time. Now, if you look at the example, there was only one path. or well, just one path. At this activity, you go to the next up to the C's one. So you just add all the cycle times together. You get one to three seconds. So one to three seconds is the rush order flow time. Which is the same, just in this example, which is the same as the total direct labor content. That is the sum of all the activity times. It's also 103. It doesn't mean always the rush order flow time and the total direct labor content is the same. So if you don't really get, uh, if you don't really understand how we calculate these parameters, please go to the previous video. It's a full video on all the parameters and how they are calculated so that you come back and continue. Then they are asked to find a direct labor utilization. So that is the total direct labor content over the bottleneck cycle time, time the number of workers. And in the question, you were given six workers. So the total direct labor content previously was 23 over the cycle time of the bottleneck is 40 times the six workers. So that means 50%, which is halfway, which is not bad, good. So, that is where we end today's lecture. And I believe by now we should be able to process or draw the flow chart of the process, identify the bottleneck, and also, um, and also try to um, balance the process and also calculate some of the parameters like cycle time, the capacity utilization, etc. So thank you very much for being with me and I wish you all the best. See you when I see you.